morning guys. Okay, today we are back again. Um, today we're going to be talking about a offshore species. The offshore guys have been complaining a little bit. We've been quite rock and surf focused. So we're doing something a little bit for you guys. Um, the Indo-Pacific sailfish. So one of the most beautiful fish in the sea. Uh, a real speedster. They absolutely like a little Ferrari underwater. Um, scientific name Istiophorus Platy, what's it? Platy Terrace, Platy Terrace, um, which means to bear sail. It's to your forest, means to bear sail, um, obviously from its fin. And uh, Platy Terrace means flat wing, so bear sail, flat wing. Yeah. So the fish itself is quite an oblong shape. Um, you're talking that kind of a shape to it. And a very long fish, finish tail, very similar to a tuna type tail, if you've ever seen that. Um, They've got the, the pick fins that come out underneath. They've got very pick fins on the side. The fins that come out underneath are very long and extended. It's quite a quite a unique feature. Along with, they they form part of the bullfish. So obviously have a long extended bull on the front, top jaw longer than the bottom jaw. That's to, to stun prey. So when they go into a bait shoal, hit sideways like that, and actually whack the prey, Sometimes cutting them in half, but it's more really just to stun them so they can pick them up afterwards. Um, overall, bluish color on top, silver underneath, stripes along, um, top to bottom. And then the most distinguishing feature is the big cell. That's where they get their name from. So it's proportionally absolutely gigantic compared to other fish that have a fairly small dorsal. Um, the cell can sometimes be two or three times the width of their body. Uh, or maybe even more than that and it'll be a com uh, when they light up to be like an iridescent blue type color to it but it all varies depending on the fish they're much like us each one is different so um, yeah very big sail uh, that can help I don't know in mating displays possibly between the males and females for signage much like a rooster has that otherwise also for when they hunt they can hunt in packs and they can actually turn uh, bait shoals, if you think about them cycling around um, the bait shoal, like if they put their fin up, it makes themselves a lot bigger and uh, will stop the bait fish wanting to, to flee around. Your size wise, um, you're looking at a fish that gets to about 12 years old, so very similar to the other pelagics. They're not very long lived, so they grow fairly quickly because in that environment they need to grow quickly to be able to, to get big enough that they're not eating themselves. Um, the world angling record comes from comes from Ecuador. Uh, that's also the I think it's the IGFA record as well. That's a fish of 100 kilos, so that's an absolutely giant sailfish. I mean, most of the guys we get are a hell of a lot smaller than that. Um, the South African record stands at about 65. Excuse me, about 65 kilos. So yeah, we get them a lot smaller, yeah, but they do move around a lot. So it's a migratory species. They they like warm, crystal clear water, a lot like the other um, pelagic species. So you're really going to find them in the surface, surface layers of the water, down to maybe about 100 meters, if that. They they really like that being above the thermoclines. So that's that change in water temperature. Um, and you often find them with that sail. You actually find them uh, sunning themselves, very similar to a snook, sunning themselves on the surface, and that sail will pop out. And that's when you need to make uh, make a plan quickly, flip a little live bait in front of it, maybe throw a popper or a stick bait or something to that extent, um, and it gets them worked up. You'll see they light up straight away. It's very similar to a lot of other species actually, um, where as soon as they get a little bit of action, get a bit excited, they light up. It's like a guy pushing his chest out and strutting around a bit. Um, but yeah, very, very popular game fish. Um, I don't know of any port from the shore. You you might be able to, maybe the drone guys in future might be able to uh, put themselves onto one or two in some, some of the deeper areas, but as of the moment, I don't know of any that have actually been caught from the shore. So really an offshore species. Um, you're gonna be looking in the warmer waters, ideally somewhere where there's a bit of change. So a change in temperature, a color line, um, around any flotsam so they're floating debris similar to like a dorado where you find them underneath the uh, floating trees and, and stuff like that because they're coming there to feed so always have that little pitching rod ready have a live bait that you can just hook on with a circle look flick out in front um, and yeah you're going to be 
nine times out of ten, if you can get it in front of him while he's on the surface, he will will take the bait. They are sometimes difficult to hook with their very hard jaws. Um, they can sometimes pop hooks out, and you don't get that solid hook set. And, and that's really where a circle hook comes into its own because he finds that corner of the mouth it, almost every time. Um, so, yeah, for for the sailies, light tackle. Um, this is where the IGFA class has really come to their own. 10 kilo is really kind of the heaviest I would ever go for them. Um, but you're looking at your 6 and 4 kilo line classes are very capable of landing pretty big sailies. Um, and that's also a circle hook really helps that because you're not having to set the hook very hard. He, he sets himself, he's got to put a bit of tension on, he's going to find the corner. Um, fluorocarbon leader, uh, just to prevent with the bull being very rough, you can get rubbed off on softer line. So, Something like uh, your Siglon fluorocarbon or even your Maxima Ultra Lead is a very hard line, very hard wearing, so that's going to help help uh, protect you from being rubbed off. And then hooks wise, sort of 6080 kind of circle look, but a finer wire um, just to be able to set that hook nicely. Obviously, you can't go too light, but um, I'd say a 60 tuna circle, much like you uh, flip baits, a tuna or dorado, is going to be absolutely perfect for that. Um, you are allowed to keep five um, per person per day, but that's, I don't know when ever, anybody's ever going to need that many uh, sailfish, that much meat. I mean, if you're talking about a 30 kilo fish, five adds up very quickly. So, ideally, release them. They are beautiful fish. The recapture rates are actually quite good, so they do survive. Um, unlike a lot of the other bullfish that seem to, to not handle the stress of being fought for a few hours. Um, so yeah, release them. They are absolutely magnificent fish. The one uh, consideration that needs to be changed in the legislation is that they are allowed to be taken as a bycatch um, on longline vessels. So the, the longline vessels fishing close in and not on the deep offshore shelf are allowed to keep them if they do catch them. So that's a bit of a thorn in the side, but there are projects and uh, legislations in place at the moment that will hopefully get passed that will push that our uh, boundary out a little bit further and keep the long liners off the, the close inshore waters. Anyway, that's a, that's a side note. Uh, yeah, the sailfish. Beautiful fish, really available for anybody. You can tackle them on lights, artificials, you can tackle them on fly, absolutely beautiful to do that. Uh, spinning tackle, your lighter line classes, your smaller tackle, your cooter stuff will handle them beautifully. So yeah, selfish. Get out there and tackle them. Cheers guys.